In this problem, we have an infinitely long, infinitely thin uh, wire here that has a charge density of lambda, right? And our goal is to find the electric field distance S away from that infinitely long, infinitely thin wire. And since it's not like necessarily a point we're trying to find it, we're just trying to find it a distance from the infinitely thin wire, that means that that point can exist at any point radially around that wire, right? So at any point uh, around this wire here, if I just draw a circle that kind of encompasses it poorly, right? And additionally, it doesn't need, mean that it's a distance s from right here. It could be a distance s here, here, and all the way down, right? So the way we're going to try to capture this is using Gauss's law. We're making a Gaussian surface right now, a cylinder around that infinitely long, infinitely thin wire here. And the reason why we're using a cylinder is because uh, we'll go ahead and denote, so this is a distance s, we'll go ahead and put the radial direction from the infinitely thin wire, we'll go ahead and call that radial direction. Any point that's uh, away from the radius of it here, here, you kind of get the idea, right? Pointing anywhere, only if that's gonna be the s hat direction, so I'll just go ahead and put like a s hat Right here doesn't necessarily mean it's up, it just means it's uh, exactly perpendicular and away from the axis here. And the reason why we're using a cylinder for the Gaussian surface is because the cylinder also has radial symmetry that points away from uh, that direction as well, because we know that the electric field is going to be pointing in that direction. So the way we're going to go ahead and start is using Gauss's law in integral form. So it's going to be the surface integral of the electric field dotted with dA, where dA is the uh, the uh, the surface normal vector, the small little differential chunk of our Gaussian surface that we're going to use that we just drew there for its cylinder, right? And that's going to be proportional to the charge that's enclosed within that Gaussian surface and the proportionality factor of 1 over epsilon naught, of course. So the first thing, just like we talked about, since we have a radial symmetry here, that points away from the infinitely long wire, and that's perfectly in the same direction. At any time that we do the dot product from our cylinder here, those arrows are gonna, this, this dot product here, is just gonna end up being a multiplication where the multiplication ends up being the magnitude of the electric field times the full uh, uh, surface area of our Gaussian surface. So our Gaussian surface, we're gonna go ahead and call that Gaussian surface um, uh, for a cylinder, it's uh, 2 pi times the radius, which is s, because that's where the distance where we're going to um, uh, try to find the electric field at. And we'll go ahead and call this distance here the, the length of the, the Gaussian surface uh, L. And L is an arbitrary length. It can be just this chunk, or it can go off into infinity if we wanted to. But we'll go ahead and call it L 2 pi s L. And then we'll go ahead and uh, write the rest of our, our equation right here. Right, And so again, our goal is to find the electric field, so we're going to go ahead and uh, use the algebra and go ahead and isolate that. Q enclosed, 1 over epsilon naught, and then this is our surface area of our Gaussian surface. Okay, so now we can do two steps right now. We can get rid of this uh, magnitude because we know the electric field from symmetry, our experience and by expression, however way we want to say it, by our intuition, we know that the electric field is going to be pointing radially in the s-hat direction, so we can go ahead and get rid of those uh, that magnitude and say that the electric field is going to be in the uh, s-hat direction here. And the next thing that we're going to go ahead and just really focus on is the Q enclosed, where the Q enclosed, if we go ahead and look over here, the Q, the, the Q that's enclosed by this uh, Gaussian surface is equal to lambda times the L. I'll go ahead and write Q enclosed explicitly. It's equal to the lambda times the length that's enclosed by that uh, Gaussian surface, which of course is L, which we just wrote here. So we'll go ahead and make that substitution. Very explicitly. 2 pi SL. And we'll go ahead and bring this closer. It doesn't need to be uh, shy. And then, finally, we'll do some 
uh, canceling out of our vectors. See, that's the cool part about these some some of these Gaussian um, surface problems is that we had some arbitrary length, and you know that would that can all raise concern because basically how much is this? Because it's, how much is it actually encompassing? Because it's an infinitely long wire. Well, it, it ends up really eloquently working out in this problem where we don't even have to uh, worry about it. It's kind of like an intermediate intermediary step in finding the uh, the answer to the problem. And so finally, in our final form that we have here, uh, this is our um, the electric field at a distance s, not a point s, but a distance s radially around, arbitrarily around the, uh, the infinitely long wire. And the last part of the problem is we're asked to check that in regards to what we got in equation uh, 2.9, which is exactly what we got. It's 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 uh, perfectly in line, and just as a refresher, in in that equation, the way we got it is that we used the electric. We found the electric field in in a similar uh, scenario, but we used it in terms of this form, the old form that we uh, we got really familiar with using in the previous problems. Except it used a lot more math, and this was just a lot simpler, and really showcases the power of Gaussian's uh, uh, Gauss's law whenever you do happen to have the symmetry that you can really take advantage of.